Hey everyone, this is Chris. Uh, this video is going to be a little different from my usual single player LCG content, but everyone is stuck at home and to be entirely honest, commander deck building is probably the most satisfying deck building experience that I have ever had. It's because of how deep the card pool is and how nuanced the interactions are plus the restrictions placed on the decks that you build that sort of force you to think outside the box a little bit. Uh, so I decided to run through my Golos EDH deck that I brewed up over the past couple of weeks. It is 95% cards that I already owned, so that might be the reason for some of these choices, but I think it's a little spicy and there's definitely some fun play patterns that you can have. So let's break it down. First up here, we got our commander, Golos, Tireless Pilgrim. A nice artifact creature, costs five. Uh, most important thing for this deck is that when he enters the battlefield, you have to search for a land, put it onto the battlefield tapped. He also has an activated ability. You pay two and Wooburk, one of every color of mana. Exile the top three cards of your library. Until the end of turn, you can play them without paying any costs. Having a source of ramp and card advantage under commander is huge. Having access to five colors means that we don't really have to think too much about whether we want to splash a color for something or whether we have a sort of color pie limitation. We just have access to basically everything. Uh, this is going to be a blink style deck. So we are going to take creatures like Golos with good ETB abilities, flick them out, flicker them back in, get those abilities to go off again and again and again. Uh, until all your friends get tired of you playing Solitaire Magic and decide they never want to play against you again. Uh, no, actually, hopefully that's not the case, but there's definitely a lot of value to be had bouncing your creatures out and back in to get the abilities to trigger more times. So, uh, let's break it down based on sort of packages of cards I have already sort of set out here. I'm going to lay them out on the table as I talk about them so that you can take a look if you're not familiar. I'm going to start with our ramp package, which is actually pretty big. Uh, start with my favorite new ramp creature, Arboreal Grazer. A one drop gets another land from your hand into play. I have a selection of three creatures that are super similar. Uh, Wood Elves gets you a forest from your library. This can get dual lands as long as they have the forest type. So the more mana you put into your, sorry, the more money you put into your mana base, the better they get. Uh, Farhaven Elf just gets a basic land, still pretty good. Elvish Rejuvenator gets a land from the top five cards of your library. Now uh, the deck is currently running 39 lands, so there's a good chance that you'll hit one, unless you've blinked Golos too many times. Uh, but it can get anything, so dual lands, scry lands, command tower, you name it. If it's in the top five, you can grab it. Um, we have Springbloom Druid, which allows you to sacrifice a land in order to get two basics. This is really good for fixing on colors, and it's pretty easy to sacrifice uh, dual lands and colors you don't care about as much, like red or black, in order to get basics for the colors that you need to fix. Or you sacrifice a basic to get that same basic plus another one. Uh, it's Harrow on a stick. You can flicker it as many times as you want. I also have everyone's favorite, and by everyone's favorite, I mean frequent reprint commander staple, Solemn Simulacrum. ETBs gets a basic. When it dies, you draw a card. We're going to use that first ability a lot more than the rest. Now, the deck also runs a pretty sweet selection of mana rocks right now. I have Soul Ring, again, another frequently reprinted staple. Just quick, easy way to get Golos out at least a turn early. Uh, I own a Mana Vault, so I decided to put it in the deck. Uh, with this, you can get Golos on turn two, if you're lucky. Uh, and there's a couple of effects in the deck that will flicker artifacts, allow you to reset it, get that mana again. Or you just save and dump the four to untap. Sometimes it happens. Uh, we also have a bunch of two Mana Rocks that generate different colors of mana. Arcane Signet taps for absolutely anything. And we have the full cycle of two color talismans from Modern Horizons. These are all basically the same effect. You can tap for colorless, you can tap for one of two colors, but it costs you a life. 
having access to that colorless mana is important in the deck for Eldrazi Displacer, and it's nice to be able to play these ramp effects without having to draw specific colors. So that's our ramp package. It's definitely a lot, but this is a deck that wants to generate a ton of mana, fix all the colors so that you can activate that Golos ability as many times as you want, or so that you can pay some color intensive cards for combo payoff. Next up, we have specific card advantage cards. And there aren't going to be as many of these, because once you have Golos on the battlefield, if you have all of your colors, his activated ability is another source of card advantage. There's a little less control about what you can play and what you can't, but being able to effectively draw three cards and play them without paying any additional costs is huge. So kicking us off, uh, Watcher for Tomorrow enters the battlefield tapped, gives you your choice of any card from the top four, once it leaves the battlefield. Uh, this means it's really good for a sort of flickery deck because you can make it leave the battlefield a lot. It is a little delayed, so it can be kind of slow, but it's cheap. And I had one, and I really like that Hideaway is on a creature because it's fun. Uh, Coiling Oracle could be ramp. It draws you extra cards, potentially, or puts land onto the battlefield. So a little bit of both here. Uh, Euro Titan of Nature's Wrath because I opened one of these, and honestly, it's like Coiling Oracle, but better. Or it's like Explore, but better. Uh, you play it, you draw a card, you can put an extra land onto the battlefield, and you can continue to cast it from your graveyard, assuming you've had enough creatures die or enough instants and sorceries put in there. We have some classics. Mold Drifter, Cloud Blazer, ETB, draw you two cards, cost five mana. Great flicker targets once Golos is on the battlefield if you need to play or dig for specific things. Um, answers can be hard to dig for because the sort of control effects that you care about block those draw effects, but can't really resolve everything. Uh, we have big Simic payoff, Tishana, Voice of Thunder. It's a very creature heavy deck, tends to rebuild pretty fast if there's a board wipe. Draws a bunch of cards, great flickering, means that you have no maximum hand size, so you can keep them all. Uh, and a pretty spicy one that we get because we're playing black instead of just Bant Flicker. Runescard Demon searches for absolutely anything you want. Flicker it as many times as you feel like, or just swing in for six in the air, which is surprisingly relevant sometimes with how small the rest of the creatures are. Uh, and that's our main card advantage package. It's not huge, but I think there's enough ramp that I haven't really felt like I've needed it too much, just given how much we can repeat a single one of these effects. With the basics of ramp and card draw out of the way, let's talk removal. I'm going to start off with a set of three removal cards, not creatures, unfortunately, uh, that allow you to get rid of anything. Uh, generous Gift, Beast Within, they're basically the same card, one in green, one in white. Destroys lands, artifacts, enchantments. Um, ideally, you want to save this for something like a Ghostly Prison or a Propaganda, or one of the cards that blocks ETBs. So get it to get rid of Torpor Orb, Hushbringer, maybe I'm misremembering what those cards are called, but... ETBs are so core to the experience of this deck that having a couple removal pieces that don't depend on that just for those specific threats is valuable. Vindicate is sorcery speed, but honestly, I love this M25 Vindicate art so much with the watermark in the background, the, the no reminder text, no flavor text. It's, it's just good. I've got a couple options for sweepers, one creature, one not. Massacre Girl, who ETBs, does a very Hearthstone effect, shrinks all the creatures on the board every time a creature dies that turn. Uh, being able to blink her and do it over and over again potentially allows you to keep the board clear of your opponent's creatures. Golos also has a pretty high toughness, so if you're lucky, maybe he won't die. But we probably have enough mana to cast him again regardless. Uh, also have a Flood of Tears, which allows you to reset the entire board draws you a card, 
if you pick up more than four things, which you probably will. Uh, and honestly, removing all the non-land permanents back to your hand is not so bad for a deck that probably has way more mana than your opponents. Gives you a chance to replay those cards, get those abilities all over again. Uh, just for fun, some single target stuff. We have Settle Beyond Reality. One of my favorite Modern Horizons cards, just because it's fun to imagine this Arboreal Grazer and an Eldrazi Titan duking it out beyond reality and having this little monkey beast win. Uh, we have Reflector Mage, which is another great answer to creatures. When you can blink it repeatedly, people will not be happy. Please don't Reflector Mage your friends to death. Even though I kind of just want to do that right now. Uh, Reclamation Sage helps you with artifacts and enchantments. Uh, and we have three sort of big creatures that do similar things. How uh, you have Duplicant, Exile's a non-token creature, good for indestructible things, gods, stuff like that. Steals their power toughness, keeps them from being rescued by any various effects. Uh, Phyrexian Ingester does the same thing, except it grows instead of just stealing the power and toughness and types. They're expensive, but they hit any creature you want, and this deck has lots of mana. Uh, and we got Meteor Golem, which can hit anything that's not a land. So another option to answer troublesome artifacts, enchantments, planeswalkers. Not a bad removal package. It's a little light on board sweepers. It's a little expensive, but all the ETBs you can keep going over and over again. Uh, Settle Beyond Reality has some nice synergy with the Flicker stuff. And the deck accelerates so fast out of the gate in order to get a bunch of lands and creatures onto the battlefield, it is more likely that your opponent is going to wipe you instead of the other way around. All right, and that's all our sort of basics out of the way. Now we're going to dig into the meatiest category of all of them our flicker effects. There are, quite frankly, a ton of these. So I'm gonna break them down into a couple of different groups as we go through this. Uh, we got our one-shot flicker effects. These are instants and sorceries, a creature, only happen one time. Uh, we have Ephemerate, which is honestly a super high value card. Two blinks for one white mana is huge, especially in the early game. Uh, Ephemerate and Arboreal Grazer is probably a keepable hand, regardless of whatever else you have, just because of how efficient that is at getting lands onto the battlefield. A Charming Prince, which can blink a creature, or, importantly, Scry 2, another great keepable opener with that Ephemerate, because it allows you to dig a little deeper in your deck to find the cards you want to finish accelerating into Golos and really turn the strategy online. Ghostly Flicker blinks any two things at instant speed. Um, good for saving you against targeted removal. Good for untapping Mana Vault. Eerie Interlude is better at protecting against board wipes. Uh, exiles all the creatures you have, brings them back at end of turn. Just a way to help keep you safe or get a ton of value from replaying your entire board in one go. We've got some Planeswalker support for Blink. Uh, Aminatu is honestly probably the most impactful card in the deck in terms of synergy with the strategy. Uh, her plus one allows you to put expensive cards back on top of your library so that Golos' ability can hit them. Her minus one allows you to Blink anything. Uh, I guess anything that is not Aminatu. So she can't reset her own loyalty. A bit of a bummer, but... Reset Artifacts, Reset Planeswalkers, you name it, Aminatu can let you have it. Kaya, Ghost Assassin, is just a spicy Planeswalker. Uh, her zero blinks herself or any other creature. Uh, does cost you a little bit of life. Can get your opponent's stuff to protect you against tokens, remove enchantments, do all sorts of fun stuff like that. Venser the Sojourner who is also great, plus two, blinks a permanent, resets artifacts, does all the things. You know the spiel, they're all gonna be the same. He's nice and shiny under the lights right now because this dual deck version is foil. 
Uh, and his minus one makes creatures unblockable during your turn, which is one of the ways that you can win the game, either with a bunch of little creatures for value ETBs, or with a couple combos that we'll talk about in a little bit. Runes Guard, Demon, Golos, any of those things can put in some chip damage with that ability. We have creatures with repeatable look effects. Misweta Witch costs four, which is pretty expensive. Allows you to save a creature for the end of the turn. Aldrazi Displacer does an instant speed flicker for only three, uh, but it does require you to have colorless mana, which is why those talismans, some of those other choices are useful. Uh, Deadeye Navigator, which only allows you to pick one specific thing to blink, but doing it for two mana at a time is really cheap. This is why I warned you not to Reflector Mage your friends to death. Uh, nobody likes it if you're bouncing all the creatures on the board every turn. We have some slightly more clunky repeatable effects. Uh, Angel of Condemnation allows you to pay three and tap to blink a creature or three and exert to oblivion ring a creature. So it's a good mix of synergy and removal here. Brago allows you to blink your entire board, assuming you can connect with a flying creature. Should be pretty easy in most cases. A rune allows you to pay two and tap to blink a creature until the end of the turn. Uh, you can use this on your opponent's creatures, so it's a good way to protect you from a beefy attacker. Uh, it allows you to make equipments and enchantments and all that stuff fall off. Pretty good choice. We have the Conjurer's Closet effects. Soul Herder grows every time you blink a creature, blinks a creature at ETB. Thassa Deep Dwelling, Indestructible God version of Conjurer's Closet from Theros, uh, also allows you to pay to tap creatures, but I don't think I've ever done that. And of course, the original Conjurer's Closet 5-mana artifact does the same thing. It's a really good follow-up to any of the ramp pieces that you've seen, or Golos, or any of that stuff. And of course, not strictly blink effects, but these two cards allow you to get double value out of all your ETBs. Panharmonicon, every creature that enters the battlefield triggers its ability twice. That's pretty good for us. And Yarok the Desecrated, every permanent that enters the battlefield triggers its abilities twice. This deck doesn't have any landfall. I intentionally avoided that, so still mostly care about creatures here, but it's good to have that backup copy, and a 3-5 Death Touch Lifelink is nothing to sneeze at. All right, moving into the final stretches here. Uh, we have some sort of miscellaneous cards. So this is the bucket that is probably likely to change the most. Uh, it doesn't fit as neatly into the fundamentals as the rest of the cards in the deck, but some nice-to-haves here. Uh, we have some basic graveyard recursion with Eternal Witness and Phyrexian Delver. Eternal Witness gets them back to hand, Phyrexian Delver gets them onto the battlefield, gives you a way to recur some of those things that are most impactful. I have a couple of token generators that help to put bodies on the board to power some of the creature effects. Uh, Tristani also protects you from mind control effects, but for the most part that's not super relevant. Uh, the creatures in this deck are not big enough or scary enough in most cases that you're concerned about that kind of control magic. Still upside, still gets tokens. You can blink to make more tokens. They have lifelink. Uh, Deep Forest Hermit makes even more tokens, but they the Deep Forest Hermit will go away after four turns because vanishing is different from fading. Uh, no, three turns. Goes away after three turns, but we got plenty of ways to blink and reset it. Uh, Basilica Bell Haunt forces your opponent to discard cards, gains you three life. Uh, nice, because some of the other things like Phyrexian Delver will cost you life. Same with the Pain Lands, so on and so forth. Just gives you an option for getting a little bit of value there. And the very spicy current standard obnoxious card, Agent of Treachery. Seven mana allows you to steal any permanent, including lands if you want, although you probably should grab creatures or enchantments or artifacts. And it draws you some cards if you steal enough things. 
Uh, this is another card like Reflector Mage that you don't want to just flicker over and over again. People won't like it very much, but it is pretty powerful. And the last category, uh, if you've been wondering sort of how this deck is going to win the game after spending infinite turns doing value nonsense, we have a couple combos that will give you infinite combat damage and allow you to close out the game against most opponents. We have former standard hated Sahili Rai, Felidar Guardian, uh, as well as Kikijiki and Restoration Angel combos. Uh, they both basically work the same way. Uh, we have an ability that allows us to make a token copy of a creature, the Sahili Rai's minus two, Kikijiki's tap ability. The creature we copy flickers the permanent that made the copy, which resets them and allows you to use the ability again. So Sahili Rai makes a Felidar Guardian, Felidar Guardian blinks Sahili Rai, new Sahili Rai comes in with three loyalty and the ability to be activated again to make another Felidar Guardian. Repeat ad nauseum until you have 100,000 one four cats and swing in at your opponents and kill them. Kihijiki Resto Angel is exactly the same way, except it makes three four flyers, it costs more mana. Uh, all of these cards are really good in the deck, even without the other combo pieces. And most of the permutations will work. Uh, the one that, well, I guess some of the permutations will work. Kikijiki works with both creatures. Sahili Rai only works with Theladar Guardian. Uh, it's because Resto Angel can only blink a creature. But this is how most likely you are going to close out the game if you get to the point where you need a combo win. I also want to run down the lands in the deck real quick. Uh, nothing too exciting on the mana base front. Once again, this was built with cards that I had on hand. Uh, I don't really like to spend a ton of money on things like fetch lands, uh, but we've got double Wooberg basics uh, using these nice new Nyx Art Theros basics that you know, remind me a little bit of Pokemon energy, but genuinely look really good on the table. I have a full set of 10 shock lands, which is difficult to arrange neatly in one hand as you are <laughs> attempting to explain. Uh, those are great because there's a couple of cards in the deck that care about specific land types. They can come in untapped if you need them to. Uh, just be wary that with Golos, if you, get that with, uh, if you get them with that ability, they have to come in tapped. I have the full set of 10 temples. These just got reprinted recently. Uh, they come in tapped, which is not a huge cost if you get them with Golos' ability. And they also allow you a little bit more information about the top of your library if you are going to activate Golos' activated ability. Sort of utility lands, I have the three sort of cheap basic fetchers, Terramorphic Expanse, Evolving Wilds, Ash Barons, pretty straightforward stuff. Uh, Command Tower, Exotic Orchard, and Forbidden Orchard for rainbow lands, uh, plus this Cascading Cataract, which allows you to filter five mana into rainbow. Uh, and I have two, two mana producing lands, which allow you to get to five colored mana play Golos, and then have the ability to activate him next turn, even if you don't have another land in hand. Uh, Temple of the False Gods works as long as you have five lands. Pretty easy to get to. And Ancient Tomb just deals two damage to you in exchange for that mana. Uh, they can help ramp you into Golos, help get that extra to activate that ability. Really great targets to search for when Golos ETBs as well. And that is the bulk of my Blink Golos deck. Uh, only thing I think I want to add is that if you're looking to do a similar thing, but take it in a slightly different direction, uh, you can take advantage of Yarok the Desecrated and Primal Surge. I don't have it in a sleeve right now because it's not in the deck. Uh, if you swap out the sort of removal package for a bunch of creatures and a bunch of enchantments that exile stuff when they ETB, 
Yarok allows you to double up those abilities. Uh, Panharmonicon can double sort of creature removal stuff, but not the enchantment stuff. And then you get Primal Surge. You can add in uh, Thassa's Oracle or new Jace. I don't remember which Jace it is. Uh, basically, there's ways that you can win once your library is empty. So Primal Surge gets all your stuff on the board, has a bunch of removal effects, a bunch of draw effects, a bunch of different synergies, and that'll end the game for you as soon as you hit that Primal Surge. Uh, chose not to go that way because it's a little sort of one card win, either you get it or you don't, but it's another option that I might decide to add in here at some point. All right, everyone. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed that quick deck tech. Maybe it'll inspire you to build some decks of your own or try out Commander if you don't currently play. Thanks for watching.